Welcome to lesson four under confidence intervals. This is inferring mu, mu using x bar. And what we will do in this one is examine the foundation of inferential statistics. Now for a clever translation. If there's anything that we are, we are devilishly clever, not to mention handsome and good looking. But we'll focus this time on our devilishly clever ability to manipulate. We have a confidence interval around mu in which we are, have a level of confidence that a randomly selected x bar will appear in that confidence interval if we take a sample. Now if we can do that, if x bar is normally distributed around mu, then we could reverse that and say mu is normally distributed around x bar. Now what you've just done is called inferential statistics. We take a sample, we calculate x bar and s and use that to tell us something about mu and sigma. But let it sink in. If x bar is normally distributed around mu, if you know mu you can figure a confidence interval for x bar. Doesn't it make sense that if you know x bar you can calculate a confidence interval for mu? You would use x bar to predict mu but you must use s to predict sigma. And s is a good predictor of sigma if n is of sufficient size, the samples are of sufficient size. But if the samples are very small, then s is not a good predictor of sigma and you have to compensate. For instance, a little kid might say, I'm really smart. And you say, how do you know you're smart? Well, I asked mama and grandma. You need to ask a bigger sample. And in statistics, when we use s to predict sigma, you will hear us talk about large sample and small sample. A large sample says that s is a good predictor of sigma. A small sample says it may not be and we have to fudge it a little bit to make sure we don't do something stupid. Oh, what a tangle web we weave when first we practice to do statistics. For the mu distribution large sample. Now notice down in the bottom of this thing just a minute that I have x bar in the center and I have so many, I have uh, s of x bar which is the standard deviation of the x bar distribution founded upon s. And we can construct a confidence interval around x bar for mu using so many of those standard deviations of the x bar distribution below and so many of the standard deviation of the x bar distributions above. And then we could say we're 90% confident that mu will fall in this range or 70% or 99% or whatever we choose. We just have to select an appropriate z score which lets us capture the percentage and then we use s of x bar to get so many of those standard deviations above or below x bar in order to trap moo. Now guys, I told you cows were smart. They've been mooing for years. Here's a better picture. We would take a sample and from that sample we would calculate x bar and s. Using s and knowing the number n in the sample, we could find s of x bar because the, the s, the standard deviation of the x bar distribution is the s, the standard deviation of the sample divided by the square root of n. Pretty clever. Now what we've done is just developed a confidence interval in which we have trapped mu. Now you've just done inferential statistics and what I've done is shown you how to catch an x bar and an s and predict mu and sigma. And we use a z score when we have a large sample. Now the question is how big is a large sample? Some people will tell you 30, some people will tell you there's no such animal. Uh, you just have to use a fudge factor all the way through. Most of the time when you're doing textbook cases you use n greater than equal to 30 and kind of call that a large sample and say that s converges on sigma. Of a small sample instead of a z score which we've learned to do we use a t score and a t score is just learning to read another table so that you can predict and replace the z with a t which broadens that confidence interval out a little bit so that you're certain that you trap mu at a given percentage of certainty. Just in closing, I will quote Winston Churchill after the Battle of Al Alamein when the British had gotten off to such a terrible start and finally Field Marshal Montgomery defeated Rommel in North Africa. He said, now this is not the end. It is not even the beginning of the end. 
but it is perhaps the end of the beginning. I hope this is the end of your beginning, that you're ready to put to rest all your fears of statistics and start getting a vision of what this is all about. Once you have the foundation, you can walk in the clouds and sing with the choirs of angels. And they, believe it or not, sing songs in quantitative statistical terms.